So, inequality has become substantially worse in Australia over the last decade, with the rich getting richer and lower income earners not getting a fair share of the growth, according to the Australia Institute. It's released new research today describing inequality as being on steroids at the moment. We're about to interview the Executive Director of the Australia Institute, Richard Dennis, but before we do, we'll go to a graph from the research to put this in some context. So this sets out what's happened with the share of growth going to the rich and poor over the last five decades. The blue bars are the top 10% of income earners and the mustard bars are the bottom 90% of income earners. So in those last two bars you can see there on this graph, that's for the decade 2009 to 19, you can see the conclusion of the Australia Institute is that 93% of the proceeds of growth over that decade went to the top 10%, while only 7% of the proceeds of that growth went to the bottom 90% of income earners. Richard Dennis joins us now to chat through his research. Uh, Richard Dennis, welcome. So there are some pretty wild fluctuations from decade to decade with this, particularly in that last transition. Naturally, that might raise questions for some people about the integrity of this methodology. You obviously have faith in it because you've published this. Just explain for us how you've done this. Uh, look, the data comes from a large international data set put together by the famous econo economist Thomas Piketty, uh, who, who famously wrote a book about uh, wealth last uh, last decade. So the the data set is international. Uh, all we've done is is chop it up into decades uh, and 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 really highlight this uh, incredible transformation that we've seen. Uh, and that is that we're often told we just need to grow the pie, we just need to grow the cake. If only there was more, we. Could could all have more. What that graph shows is that in the decade to 2019, 93 percent of the of the of the expansion in the cake, 93 percent of the benefits of economic growth went to just 10 percent, the wealthiest 10 percent of the population. Now that that is a shocking number. We were surprised to see it. But of course, we know that the minimum wage is growing far slower than the wages of CEOs. We know that unemployment benefits have grown far more slowly than the incomes of average or high income Australians. Uh, so we, we know that all at an individual level that inequality has been growing. All this data does is, is show, well, you know, if we look at it top down, if we look at the big picture, who, who, got, this, who got the bigger cake? Uh, and unfortunately for low income earners, uh, they didn't get much. That's why the cost of living crisis is biting so hard. And how do you measure how the proceeds of growth have filtered through to the different income groups? Oh, well, that's that's literally the data that comes from Thomas Piketty. The, uh, the around the world countries have have the same issues. And uh, as you can see, Australia hasn't always uh, had this problem. And indeed, as we do in the paper, we look at other countries and we see in other countries uh, the benefits of growth are far more evenly spread. The way we collect the data hasn't changed. The data is collected across multiple countries. Australia just had this unique decade. And uh, again, think about we, we're told again and again, why did the economy do so well? Well, the mining boom. OK, well, most people don't work in the mining industry. Most people don't own a mining company. So we shouldn't be surprised that most people didn't get much out of that boom. We've been told the benefits would trickle down. Um, all this data shows is it didn't happen, that the, the vast majority of the income uh, went to people who were directly benefiting from that. Uh, similarly, you know, the property boom was great for people who own six properties, didn't deliver much for people who own no properties. So we, we know all these things were happening. All this data does is, is to bring it together at the economy wide level. Yeah, and so you've just touched on this. That was my next next question. What drove this massive trend change in the transition from the 2000s into 2010? Well, I do think that the mining boom played a big part of that. We, you know, we know that fortunes were made by people like Gina Reinhardt. Uh, obviously, that fortune was was hers. It wasn't spread out uh, in 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 countries like Norway when the price of oil and gas has surged. The Norwegian government collects a lot of tax and spreads the benefits out. In Australia, we we don't have. Uh, a resources tax like that. We don't have 
the kind of systems that other countries have that that, that take the benefits of a resources boom and spread them out. Uh, so yeah, so we've seen a property boom that, and, and remember this data only goes up to 2019. So we had a, a roaring property boom. We, we had a mining boom. Uh, we've seen CEO pay. We've seen the, the tech industry delivering enormous, uh, enormous incomes and enormous uh, share price increases for some people. But again, we, we know that the minimum wage wasn't growing. We know that unemployment benefits weren't growing. We we know that, you know, during COVID, uh, we were chasing people for, for robo debts, but we were exempting uh, people that were overpaid on JobKeeper. So the, the consequence of all of these choices uh, have caused this problem. And these graphs are split the two income categories into top 10% and the rest. Can you give us an idea of what the cutoff line is? Is it like people earning over $200,000 a year or something like that? Uh, no, so so the, the data is all put together uh, in uh, in an internationally consistent way. Yep. So it's put together uh, using uh, using euros, not Australian dollars. But to give you a sense of it, people earning over one hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars would be in that top ten percent, and people earning forty thousand dollars. So people working full time on the minimum wage in Australia are only earning uh, around $40,000, uh, they're, they're obviously missing out. So, no, we're not talking about people just on 200000 The top, The top 10% would kick in uh, around $100,000, $120,000 a year. But while it's not polite to say it, in Australia, $100,000 a year is a lot of money. There are people who work full time as a cleaner who earn $40,000 a year. $100,000 is, 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 is two and a half times that. Uh, but in Australia, we've, we've kind of convinced ourselves that if you're not earning a quarter of a million dollars a year, you're not rich. Well, there's no economic definition of rich, uh, but we, we do know that the, the minimum wage in Australia is, is very, very low. And of course, the unemployment benefits far lower still. And so how does this feed into the Labor government's plans for the reform? Or how does this research reflect on the Labor government's plans for reform? Right. Well, all this data describes what happened uh, between uh, up till 2019. So obviously that was the previous government. Uh, unfortunately, what's happened in the last couple of years wasn't expected, wasn't anticipated. But what's happened is we've seen real wages falling. We've got high inflation. We've got real wages falling. Uh, that's that's and, and of course, we've got r rapidly rising energy prices, particularly electricity. So all of these things have loaded up cost of living pressures on, on particularly low income earners. Uh, none of this is the current government's fault, but on their watch, what we're gonna see next year is the stage three tax cuts come in and the stage three tax cuts will deliver around $10,000 a year to people earning over $200,000 and literally nothing not a cent of the stage three tax cuts goes to people uh, earning less than uh, working on the minimum wage, for example. So, you know, unfortunately, we've had a decade in which inequality has risen very rapidly and we've already legislated these stage three tax cuts. They were, they were Scott Morrison's tax cuts, but, but, but Labor voted for them and, and committed to keeping them. But it's unavoidable. The, the consequences of the stage three tax cuts are going to make that that decade of inequality even worse. So some people might like, like to think Australia is a, is a land of equality and everyone gets a fair go. What does this research show about Australia's position in the world when it comes to equality? Oh, look, of course, Australians are feel to, free to feel anything they want. What the data says is that Australia is not a particularly even uh, equitable country when it comes to distribution of income. Uh, the Nordic countries, you know, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, uh, these countries have far less extremes uh, than Australia. And what was really striking from our research is that while the, the decade to 2019 saw an enormous share of economic growth go to the top 10%, uh, we, we led the world in that. Um, uh, while in inequality is rising in other countries, it's not rising as fast as it is in Australia. So uh, it's not too late, of course. There's, there's nothing to stop us from tweaking the stage three tax cuts. There's nothing to stop us uh, from boosting unemployment benefits or the minimum wage. These are democratic choices. They're not economic choices. They're democratic 
democratic choices. Other countries have made choices to keep uh, to, to reduce inequality. Other countries have made choices to to make the gap between what a teacher earns and a and a, and a banker earns lower. In Australia, we've 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 hoped that trickle down would would help. And what this data shows is. Uh, trickle down economics was certainly good for the people who who were who were riding that mining boom and property boom, but not not so good for people working working on the minimum wage. Okay, Richard Dennis from the Australia Institute, thanks so much for talking us through that research. Thank you.